Hi, uh, welcome to this video on working with inequalities. Um, it's the first part of a two-part, uh, well, the first part of the um, of two-part session on on inequalities. The next bit is going to be solving with inequalities. Um, so, if you want to take down these notes here, and if you decide to work further forward, um, these notes under here will be part of um, the next video. But you do need to know both of them for the next video, so that's why I kind of combine them here. Uh, but for this one, working with inequalities, um, if you could just copy down these notes and then uh, pause the video, copy down the notes, and then we can continue with this maths. All right, so assuming you've done that, uh, you get two types of inequality questions, the basic ones, um, and they're just testing your fundamental understanding of what an inequality actually is. Um, if I were to compare an inequality with, say, something like this, x is equal to 4, versus x is, and then we throw in this sign, and then the number 4. What this means is that x has a value, right? I can say x is 4, it's the number 4, it's 4 of something, okay? However, here, what I'm saying here is x is less than 4. So, for example, if you go to um, Thorpe Park, you've often seen those uh, lines across you have to be at least 1.4 metres tall. So, if I were to illustrate that on, on a height, uh, uh, the height representing, represented by h, I would say that your height has to be greater than 1.4 metres, or I, do, I think it's actually 1.2 metres. Uh, in order to get on that run. Um, if you are taller than that, then we can say that your height is actually greater than 1.2, so we can say that h would actually be 1.6 or 2 meters or something like that. If you are less than that, then we'd say your height is actually less than 1.2. Right? Um, so these are often described as the crocodile mouths. Okay, the crocodile always eats the biggest number. I think that's how they're introduced in um, in key stage two or key stage one, um, where you know you can tell me, you know, some I've even seen people do this. And, you know, draw little teeth showing they always need the bigger number, but that's basically what it means. Now, in this regard here, oh, in, in this in this example here, if your height is, oh, if your height has to be bigger than one point two meters, what happens if you are one point two meters? What happens if you come up to that line? It's sitting there, and your head height is bang on there, like that, bang on the line. You are still allowed to go on the ride. So you don't only have to be bigger, but you can actually be on the line itself. And the way we represent that is by throwing in a little line there. You can think of it like that. You can say, well, my height is actually 1.2 meters. It's equal to 1.2 meters, but it can be bigger. And that's uh, two ways to think about it. I've turned the equal sign into it, and uh, well, I'll agree to that sign. Right now, <clears throat> I should point out at this point that it doesn't matter what direction the sign faces. I could say there um, that h is bigger or equal to 1.2 meters, or I can flip around and say that 1.2 meters is less than or equal to h. All right, so there you can read them both ways, which is important because often people will um, read this incorrectly simply because they're used to um, the greater than sign always facing that direction. Right. The greater than, greater than sign doesn't have to face that direction. It can face that way and still be read as greater than. Okay, so these notes here basically uh, refer to that. If the open mouth is pointing towards the bigger side, well, the open mouth always points towards the bigger side, if that's the x, then that's saying that x is greater than 2. However, here you can see the smaller sign is pointing towards the x, so therefore x is less than 2. Right? If there's a line underneath here, that means it can be either uh, less than or greater than, uh, less than, or equal to, or greater than, or equal to, but it's the or equal to, which is what this line gives it. Um, you can combine inequalities, right? So you can combine inequalities. You could say um, that the temperature that I'm cooking at, it needs to be between 180 and 210 degrees, all right? So my temperature, let's say T is temperature, so T can be bigger than 180. So I can say that T is bigger than 180. Right, I could say that. But I then also need to note that T can also be less than 210. Right, so all I've done here is I combine these into one statement up here. So T is bigger than 180, but T must be less than 210. 
Um, these represent two inequalities. So in the example here, I say that um, x is greater than 2, but it is less than or equal to 4. Okay? So um, you, all you're doing is combining something. x is, at the same time as being bigger than 2, it is also less than 4. Right? So the temperature that I want to cook something at is going to be bigger than 180, but less than 210 degrees. Right? That's um, the way we read um, a kind of a double inequality there, if you want to think of it. Right, so there are two main ways in which you can get these um, questions asked to you. You can be asked to show what an inequality is on a number line. So, for example, <clears throat> if I were to say that x is not equal to, x is greater than 3, or x is less than or equal to 4, or if we say that x sits between minus 1 and 3, and let's say it can be equal to 3. You can be asked to represent these on a number line. Right? So, this one here, if I drew a number line out here, I had 3 in the middle, 2, 1, 4, and 5 on either side. Uh, the problem with this is that x can be any number that's bigger than 3. So, I mean, I could carry on going all the way down. You know, I, I could basically, until in positive infinity. But I can't represent that on a number line. Okay? It's, it's impossible. So the way I do it, I kind of get around it, is I just say, all right, well, x clearly starts at 3 and moves up that way. Yeah. And I just represent that with an arrow. All right, so let's have a look at these. That's a, a nice way of doing it. So we have 4, I'm just putting them on top, 4, 3, 2, 5, and 6 on that side. Now, in this case, x is less than 4. All right, so there we go. It's less than 4. It's all the numbers that are less than 4. But the problem is here, I've forgotten about this. Okay. In this one, x can't be 3. But in this one, x can be 4. So how do I represent that? The mathematics have kind of got, away, uh, got around it by colouring in this dot. So what we're saying is that that one cannot be 3 because there's a clear dot there. That one can be 4 because I've got a solid dot there. Right? And in this case here, if I want to represent that, so let's start with here at minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So there's my number line all the way out. Let's put arrows on the end of this as well. Um, Alright, so in this case, x must be bigger than negative 1. Alright? So we put our number line in here. Negative 1. Can it be negative 1? No, it can't. So I've got a solid dot, and it's going to go up like that. All right, and if I come that up, x must be less than 3. Okay, well, 3, can it be 3? Yeah, x can be 3, so that's going to be a coloured in dot there. And it's going to go, but it's not going to go on for infinity. Neither of these lines are. This one's going to stop there, and this one's going to stop there. So all I do is I join them up, like that. All right, so this inequality here is not represented the same way. It doesn't have arrows on the end. It has a beginning and an end. Right. Now, the second way they can ask you um, to represent integers <clears throat> is by um, asking you to represent them as integer values. Sorry, this is to represent inequalities. Um, the way they can ask you to represent inequalities is um, through integer values. So they can ask you, what are the integer values of this inequality? All that means is, integer is kind of a, a maths word for whole numbers. Right. So, if we look at this example here, I want to represent all the whole numbers that could be x, right? So all we do is we start at my lowest point. Could x be negative 1? No, it can't, right? It can't be negative 1 because it doesn't have a little line underneath it. So x can't be negative 1. Therefore, if we go up and whole numbers, the next number is 0. It can be 0 because 0 is between negative 1 and 3. Can it be 1? Yes. Can it be 2? And then I get to 3, which is pretty much my upper boundary here. But can it be 3? Yes, it can. So my integer values for x, in this, uh, represented by this inequality, could be 0, 1, 2, or 3. All right. uh, and that's, those are the two main ways. Uh, they might ask you to represent, uh, instead of representing an integer, they'll give you a bit of a story. So they'll say, um, the speed that we travelled between London and Bournemouth was, uh, it varied between 60 miles an hour and 90 miles an hour.
represent this as an inequality with x equaling speed. So you can say, all right, well, speed is x. It's at between 60 miles an hour and 90 miles an hour. There you go. And then someone, sorry, might think that it could be equal to that, you say. It could have traveled at those speeds. Right, so to be honest, that, those sorts of questions are pretty straightforward. You just have to take time to read them. All right, um, if you're keen to push yourself a little bit further, um, have a look for my next video on um, solving inequalities. Um, but if you're just looking to understand, uh, uh, understand inequalities a little bit more, then uh, this is fine for you. All right, thanks very much. Cheers.